Hey folks, Colin here with Local Enterprise Broadcasting, doing an update on YZ426. I know I said I'd be doing a ride video, but uh, not posting it, um, and you'll see why here in a second. So uh, I got it all together, took it out to the West Desert on a uh, slightly okay day to ride. Probably wasn't the best. It should have been a lot warmer before I decided to do this, but fuck it. Uh, so, if so facto, I blew up the fucker. And, uh, here's what happened. So, kind of a dual update. If you're using these radiators, these GPIs that you can get on eBay for about 70 bucks, um, word to the wise, these radiators work really well. Too, too good, in fact. Um, so, quick story, I was riding this thing, uh, Got about two hours on the engine. Sun started setting. I already went through a tank and a half of fuel. Um, I may put some of the video up, you know, eventually, but I don't really see the need because I just, you know, I grenaded it, so whatever. But man, did it fucking run great. Anyways, um, so sun started setting. I was heading back to the car and I was in fifth gear. Was not paying attention to my temperature via my vapor computer and um, got on it, you know, hit a little whoop section and uh, went to get on it and it was doing good and all of a sudden the back tire locked up and I popped the clutch, got it to restart and it was just gutless. I knew something was very, very wrong. Uh, but I didn't hear any strange clacking, ka -ka -ka -back -back -back, you know, nothing terrible. Just the bike was running like a two-stroke on a fucked up top end, which means I knew I'd lost, I'd lost my rings. And, uh, no, you know, I looked down, much to my horror, the engine temperature was at like 115 degrees. This is after two hours of riding, going from like, you know, 160, 175 Look down at the throttle, or look down at the uh, uh, engine temperature, 115, 120, right around there. So, for those of you out there buying these radiators, be advised, uh, they work really, really well, a little too good. And if you're riding on a cold day and you don't have a, a, a temp, you know, some way of monitoring your engine temperature, then this is what's gonna happen. So, have here the cylinder. That's what a cold seize looks like, folks. As you can see, my cylinder is beautiful everywhere else. Got the hone marks, still nice and gorgeous. But right here on the aft side, you can see the ring jump. That's what a cold seize looks like. Come over here to the piston. And you can see So what happens is, is uh, basically because it's a forge piston, the forge piston expands and contracts a lot faster than the stock uh, cast one. So the cylinder contracted a lot sooner than the piston and it took up that gap and the ring obviously didn't have anywhere to go and it just beep. So that's what happens folks when you have too much cooling so, um, this is actually a pertinent point to bring up to your, uh, to you snow bike guys. You guys out there doing snow bike conversions. Um, this can be a problem for you, especially four strokers. Uh, if you're running a two stroke, if you're jetted right, for some reason, they don't seem to care. Um, but a four stroke, oh yeah, yeah. And so what's the answer to this? Well, I am going to be putting on a KTM thermostat yeah that's great because all the guys that run ktms they throw them away they get rid of them so you can find them on craigslist or in whatever fucking ebay you name it these things are a dime a dozen literally i got like two on order and uh, they were like 10 bucks a piece so yes i will be plumbing in a thermostat into this thing so that this never happens again because i ride in areas where it gets really cold and the day that I rode, it was only like 45 degrees. But I said, fuck it, I'm going for it anyways. So, if you don't live in a cold climate, don't worry about it. Um, 
But in my opinion, I think 20 bucks plus a couple fittings from a hardware store, save your engine. Uh, regardless if you live, okay, so let's say you put these, uh, these radiators on and you live in the desert area or you live in a really hot area. Putting on a thermostat actually helps in the long run anyways. There's a common myth that, oh, I'll just take the thermostat out, your engine will run cooler. Um, no, and here's the reason why. Uh, and I laugh when KTM guys do this for this reason. When, when you pull that thermostat out, you're actually allowing coolant to go through the system a lot faster. So the thermal heat exchange doesn't actually happen through the radiators. Now this is like in stock applications. Now in my case, because I went with bigger radiators that have higher flow and this and that, I actually need a thermostat. Um, because even with, ha and I, I even blocked off one of my radiators completely. The whole, the whole left side of this bike's radiators were completely blocked off with a piece of cardboard and duct tape. And it was still, still too cold. So, um, I just, it, it blew it up for my own reasons. But anyways, back to the root topic. You want to put, a, if you're going to upgrade your, if you're going to upgrade your cooling system like I did on this 426s, go and get you one of them KTM thermostats. I'll be doing a video on how to do it, like how to properly install it and this and that, because I, something I, I got to warn you guys, if you're going to upgrade your cooling system with these bikes and you live in a cold area, you are probably going to fucking cold seize your engine. It just happens. All right. I found out the hard way and I hope you guys take a good lesson from this. And cause this, this is a, this is a $400 mistake at the very least. Now, silver lining in it all um is now i have an excuse so there's a bike for sale down south of me it's been for sale forever and it's one of those like motorcycle shops it's a bone stock 426 uh they're not budging on the price but they will here in another month because it's been up for like weeks and uh, i offered them a fair price cash and they're like nah we're and they, we either way they did the fucking weasel shit that salespeople do um but they'll get desperate and i just need to go down there with cash and i know they'll let me leave with the bike but either way i'm buying another one of these 426s eventually and um i'm gonna send this cylinder out to get punched out so and then i'm gonna order a brand new one factory they're still available believe it or not and a new piston um and then i'm gonna send this one out to get punched out so we're going to see how much I can bore one of these things. So that'll be a whole other separate project. So this will be, this is project 426. And I believe the max displacement you can punch these motors out is to right around 440 on the bore. So if I add a stroker kit to it on this other bike that I'm planning on getting for cheap, maybe I can punch it out to like a 460. And then we can see like peak power, which you can get out of these things. Um, if you're just like totally going crazy. But like I said, that's a whole other thing and it's one hell of a big if. At the very least, I know I gotta buy another cylinder. I mean, there's just, there's no fixing that. You can see the Nicosil is fucking gone and pieces of the ring and piston have fused to the, uh, to the cylinder wall there. It really sucks, man, because I did a good, uh, you can see where it didn't fuck it up, man. Like the honing was, ah, oh, God. Oh, but here's the good news. There's always good news in all this nonsense. So, I'll set that down on the ground. The cylinder head, the cylinder head did not, um, those are the buckets. I really hope the shims didn't fall, and they did. Fuck. Well, I guess I'm gonna be doing a video on how to remeasure and reinstall those. Hopefully I can find the shims. But uh, let's do this this way. Uh, doesn't look bad, didn't damage the cylinder head, which is fine because that's where the majority of the power is made anyways. So that's an update on what's going on with 426. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Uh, all you 75 subscribers, thank you. Um, I know you are all here for different reasons because I 
post a variety of weird content from conspiracy theories to comedy to parody to how-to videos on this particular dirt bike. But uh, again, if you like what you see, give me a big thumbs up. If you don't, then I would appreciate it if you just check the fuck out. If you stuck out this long, cool. If you really like the content, give me a goddamn subscription and something in the comment section. Let me know if you like what I'm doing. Uh, be sure to check out the other content on the channel. Like I said, it's not all about stuff like this. So thanks, guys. See ya.